It's Jean de Florette about treachery in a French farming village between a crafty old bachelor, played by Yves Montand, performing his meanest character in years, and an innocent married man, a hunchback played by Gerard Depardieu, who inherits his mother's farm, which adjoins Montan's property. Montan wants the property, of course, for himself, and he has a plan about blocking up its water supply that he explains to his nephew, his partner and heir. Écoute mon plan. Il est déjà aux trois quarts bouché. Et si par accident elle se bouchait complètement? Quel genre d'accident? Eh ben, suppose que tu passes près de la source avec un sac de ciment sur le dos. Tu glisses, tu tombes, et plaf! Le ciment va tout juste boucher le trou. But even though they do plug up the natural spring with concrete, a good rain and some hard work allows Depardieu and his family to raise some rabbits, lots of rabbits, and later some vegetables, great vegetables. But eventually the rainy season ends and parched earth sets in. And suddenly, Depardieu is begging for rain. At one point, it seems like his prayers have been answered. Ah, je vais recevoir en pleine figure cette eau bénite que la Providence nous envoie. Oh, merci. Oh, merci. Oh. C'est là-bas qu'il pleut. That's a great scene. Eventually, Montan proposes to lend Depardieu mortgage money, hoping he'll go broke so Montan can take over the farm. Now, this stuff may sound like melodrama, but not the way this film is acted or the way Claude Berry directs it and shoots the French landscape. Jean de Florette is sumptuous to look at. It is high drama that disappoints only when it ends with the story left a little bit unresolved, telling us part two will be released at the end of this year. Still on its own, this part of the story is sensational. And it's good because it's so simple. This is not, uh, you call it melodrama, I think it's the opposite of melodrama. I think it's everyday life. People go out there, they try to do something, they're mm -hmm. prevented from doing it, mm -hmm. they work and they strive and their dreams are dashed, mm -hmm. all because of the absolute cruelty and evil of this Montan character who looks so benevolent the whole time that he's doing it. He, he, he doesn't seem like an evil person, but he is, because to him the land and possession of the land is much more important than any city slicker and any city slicker. Well, that's slicker. the other thing that this comes in, brings in, which is the outsider coming in and how this community, this rural community, just really clamps down and protects this, uh, itself against this other guy. I wasn't calling it melodrama. I said it might seem like melodrama, the outline. It is high drama, what I call it great drama and I can't wait to see part well, two. Well, it's a very good film. And we agreed on Jean de Florette, the first part of a French rural epic about greed, evil, and determination. We both admired it very much. Gene thinks it's one of the year's best, so obviously that's one we recommend strongly. 